everybody doing today? This is such a throwback to my like first videos that I used to do when I was like driving and doing content. So here we are. Um, I put my glasses on because I can't see. All right, you guys. So today I uh, got all of my information. Well, actually, yesterday I got all my information about internship and practicum and different sites and how everything works and I feel like this is going to be like um, the part of the program where it's like a lot of things have to be in motion and I really really need to connect with more counseling students on this because or even if like your school works with a certain site I don't know, like you have to do a lot of it. So I just, maybe it would help if we would share some information because I'm just gonna tell you guys like my personal experience so far and this is just my experience without the help of my supervisors and teachers and I'm getting a lot of like, conf not confusion, but I feel like they're in, in like the mental health field I feel like there's a lot of responsibility placed on not a lot of people, which makes sense because most of the time the people running it are like the licensed providers and they have to worry about everything, like the business aspects, the therapy aspect, the employees, whatever. So I understand and in no shape or form is this complaining. I just want to share my experience with you guys. Um, like I said from day one when I started this journey, this is kind of getting into, like, you know, when you have to do your internship and be done. So, it's one thing being a student, and even my supervisor said this, like, she's getting us ready to be professionals. So, when we're done with the program, we can start working and be a registered intern and get ready for licensure and, you know, start making money and working in the community and you know, working towards the hours to be entrepreneurs or the people that want to be entrepreneurs can have their own practice. So that's where I'm at. And um, so I'm just going to share my kind of experience, like I said, but before that, you guys follow me at KD Counseling on Insta. A lot of you guys, I feel like there's certain times of the year where, and I've been doing this for a year now, almost. Yeah, almost for a year. And I feel like there's different times of the year where like the students uh, inquire about different things and right now it's a little bit slower but that's good because we're working hard you guys we're within the program we're doing our thing or we're finishing up undergrad for a certain people so you're doing great but yeah let me know if you have any questions over on uh, insta that's where i like to chat with you guys or leave a comment down below and we can start a discussion but so yeah uh, for my internship, I got like a list of places where the school has worked with different providers, you know, in Florida and in the United States. So this isn't just like a my town thing. Um, this is kind of like any student can apply this to them kind of thing. Um, I feel like the people that run certain places change out quite often or they move around and positions are kind of changed and so I'll tell you like three examples one of the examples that I'll give you is I called a place right and it was on our list and I know it's a big provider here in Naples where I'm at and I was like oh okay well maybe they have like an idea about like what is needed right and maybe I can ask if they're accepting students because that's where I'm starting with like uh, I know we have to send out our resumes to get internships, but I'm not going to be sending out resumes if I don't know who to send the resume to. And also, if they're even accepting students, like, I don't want to waste somebody's time, like, with them getting an email with a resume. They'll be, like, kind of confused, like, hey, did we ever talk to anybody about a resume? No. You know, about getting hired? No. So first, I want to ask if they're accepting. I'm really nice. I call. That's the first thing. I call and I'm like, hey, I'm a student at, you know, such and such university and I'm 
starting my practicum and internships in September. I was wondering if you guys will have space for an intern. And um, one thing I do want to mention is not a lot of places, I mean, some of them, some of them don't do practicum. They just want you to be an intern, which means direct care, like you have a caseload. Practicum is you do have a couple of uh, clients and you're doing a little bit of direct care, but you're not having a caseload. So you might have to do practicum at one site that accommodates practicum. And most of them that do practicum offer the internship after. So you can stay there or um, you'll have to do your practicum somewhere. And if let's say you don't like the site or something, you can do your internship at one of the places that requires you or is only supervising interns with a caseload. So that's kind of the difference. Um, again, to mention, this is free work. Uh, you're not getting paid. Um, I've seen some, I don't wanna get off topic, but I've seen some ads that say um, registered interns get paid, but that's registered intern, that's not internship. So when you see that on any of these job posting websites, with Zip Recruiter, Indeed, whatever you have, access to if you're looking for you know those type of jobs it is once you're done with your master's program and you are eligible for licensure that's what those posts are no when you're in the program that's free so that's good to know because the you know the verbiage gets a little confusing sometimes so yeah that was the first thing um that happened uh, I reached out to another placement site again just calling the number uh, because we got you know we get numbers to call and we also get email addresses so I call the number first just be like hey are you accepting students and um, if they are I'll email those specific people because most of the time when you call these places you're speaking to just like the person that picks up the phone they might you know I, I don't know I don't know if they might be therapists or not, but most of the time it's like a front desk person because it's a big facility. So they might not know exactly. So, but if they, you know, they, they have some information and I called and the person's like, oh, well, we only take students from X university and it's a university here in town. And I was like, oh, well, uh, it's just confusing because my university says we have a contract with you until 2024. And they're like, oh no, like we're fully booked with you know this other university so I was like okay great so I bring these things up you guys because again I'm just sharing my experience with you and uh, this might happen like you might you know see 10 places where you're at where you can do your internship and then you're gonna have to call all them or if your university has like a direct tie or if you guys have a counseling center definitely take advantage of that because it's I think it's a lot easier session with her real client so they have to have clients who are willing to you know record their session so and that brings me to the next point where if you see like an independent person um, a lot of therapists and counselors that I've seen and psychologists so yeah the people required for your supervision are licensed mental health counselors licensed social workers and psychologists but they have to have some kind of continuing education about supervision so if they have that you can reach out let's say you see somebody in town that has a practice they might want a free intern you guys but you have to reach out and they even if they don't have this like supervision certificate they might be able to attain it my teacher told me like my supervisor is like hey it's some of them 
are able to do it because of their credentials. Let's say they're like a psychologist. They might just need something, maybe like an online course or something to be able to supervise a student. So, but again, like that is like, again, I'm being honest, you guys, that's just like extra stuff like that I, I can do, but like, why should you do that? You're like already doing classes. You're working if, you know, you have a job or whatever. I kind of wanted to have the ability to like, you know, pick a site that the school has a relationship with. But again, that's up to you. That's why it's really important to pick a good program and an accredited program because I'm sure, you know, if let's say there was nothing for me to choose from, I'm sure my teachers would help me and they would be able to, you know, secure something for me because I know they really care and they've always been very open and honest and said, hey, here's my number, here's my email, please let me know if you have any questions. So I'm not saying my school per se wouldn't attain this, but if you're a person that really wants that like stability and like that structure where we provide this, where you don't have to worry about it, make sure you pick a program that does that for you. Because, you know, there could be things that you gain by, again, for me, like, it's not an all online program that I'm in because I do have to go in person, but it's primarily online. So it's, you know, it's different. You're not at like the university all the time. And again, you have to weigh out what your wants and needs are and you go from there. So the last one I'm going to talk about is um, I did reach out to like a private practice that was on my list and they were extremely nice and they were like oh yeah such and such the professional that is licensed to do this and is licensed to be a supervisor is like oh yeah they're looking for somebody as an intern so i'm like finally oh my god i was so happy i was like oh my god maybe this is it and uh, hopefully it is because looking at this you guys i think i want to do private practice. I think that they would have more time to spend with me and I feel like I would get more one-on-one, -on -one, you know, learning um, because when somebody's their own boss, um, they will, you know, be able to teach me how to, you know, take notes and do all the things you have to do and doing intakes with clients and maybe I'll do one internship like that and if I need to, I'll go to like a bigger institution if available for my second internship but if not I would love to just do an internship at a uh, like a private practice I've always worked for a place that is family owned so I'm really like I'm very used to working with people that are entrepreneurs that have their own business that work you know have to really be quick on their feet and pivot when you know things like with the whole thing that happened the panorama like I saw our owners just do great things and charity work and I don't know it was really cool to see like the power that you have as you as a business owner um, you know utilizing your skill you know I work in a restaurant that's not utilizing counseling skills but still it really showed me like the resilience of somebody that really runs their own thing and knows how to do it so we will see how this goes for me, guys. I wanted to, I'm gonna be on here a lot more talking about this because this is kind of like what the whole point of this channel was, was like the nitty gritty of doing these things because I can sit here and talk about classes and how I'm burnt out or, you know, all that good stuff. And it's important, but a lot of us at this point, we're students, we know how that goes. So I think this will be like a unique perspective about, you know, the process like being in the you know in the middle of all this so let me know what you guys think let me know how you know everything is in your life and if you have any questions check me out at katie counseling you have a great day bye guys